It's really my great honor to be here and meet everybody here. My talk today is about HIV and liver diseases. I have two cases. Let's get started with the first case. Female patient, um, the age, he, her age was 40 years old. Uh, she was diagnosed with HIV infection for 13 years and received the treatment with the antiretroviral agent. Her viral was undetectable. Her CD4 count was pretty good between 250 and uh, 300. Her last CD4 count was 320. She was referred to liver clinic with the problem of low-grade fever, epigastric pain, and dark color urine. This is the first step that she came to visit me in May 2017. You can see that her liver function test, she has elevation of AST and ALT. She has mild jaundice and elevation of alkali phosphatase. Looked back to her liver function test that has been done uh, earlier during the past year, the liver enzyme ALT elevation uh, increased uh, during the past year. She said that she has no history of alcohol drinking or taking any other drugs or herbal medicine. She was not obese. If you were the primary physician, what would be the next investigation for this patient? Let's what? Whether you're going to look for the uh, cause of hepatitis, a viral hepatitis B or C, which is very common, or hepatitis A or E, which can cause jaundice, or you're going to do the outer cell, upper abdomen, or liver biopsy. Well, um, most of you answer to take the serology for viral hepatitis B and C infection. But in reality, what I did first is doing the ultrasound because uh, her shift complaint is uh, epigastric pain and low-grade fever. So we wonder whether she has epigastric pain and fever because of uh, acute cholecystitis or uh, cholangitis from the gallstone. So we did the ultrasound first. And fortunately, we didn't find the dilatation of the bile duct, either intrahepatic or common bile duct, which means that there was no obstruction from the gallstone or CBD stone. And in the gallbladder, there was no gallstone. In the liver, it looks very good, normal size, shape, and echogenicity. So next, we did the serology for viral hepatitis A, E, B, and C. They were all negative. Looked back again into her liver function test. When we look at globulin, it looks like her goblin was very high, 7.7. .7. The normal level of goblin is 3.3. .3. When we see the goblin level is very high in the patient come with uh, hepatitis, this raises a question whether this patient have high level of goblin for autoimmune hepatitis. So next, we work up whether she has an autoimmune hepatitis. We test for the uh, globulin level, IgG, gamma globulin level, which is very high, three-fold uh, upper normal limit of level. And she tested uh, for the autoantibody. She was positive for NA, anti-nuclear antibody, at very high level, uh, tighter. And uh, the another autoantibody, which is anti-smooth muscle antibody, this is an autoantibody that we commonly used uh, for diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis. It turned out to be negative. Because the IgG was very high and ANA was positive at high titer. So we think that this patient might have autoimmune hepatitis. We did the liver biopsy of this patient. And the liver biopsy shows that in the portal tract area, there was moderate inflammation, and the inflammatory cells here is lymphocytes and plasma cell, which is characteristics of uh, autoimmune hepatitis. In lobular uh, area, the hepatic lobule, there's some inflammation. The bile duct is normal, no significant fibrosis, and we excluded other cause of hepatitis, for example, like viral infection or 
uh, viral hepatitis B, C, or granuloma like TB, and no viral inclusion on granuloma seen. The liver biopsy result was compatible with autoimmune hepatitis or AIH. To make the diagnosis of AIH, we usually use the criteria, the simplified diagnosis criteria, which comprise four components. The first one is autoantibody, uh, either ANA or anti-smooth muscle positive. The second one is gamma goblin or IgG. The third one is evidence of hepatitis on liver histology. And the most important one is you have to exclude other causes that can cause hepatitis, especially the viral hepatitis or drug-induced hepatitis or fatty liver or alcohol. This patient, when we calculate the score, we got seven, which means that the diagnosis of AIH in this patient was considered to be definite AIH. Autoimmune hepatitis in HIV infection is actually a rare entity. We, ex uh, we don't know the exact incidence of AIH in HIV infection. In general population who don't have HIV infection, the incidence is about one to two per 100,000. So it's very low. For the, HIV uh, for the HIV infected patient, there was very limited number of the report in the literature, which is less than 30 cases. But I think that this number might be underreported because in my hospital, Jula Hospital, uh, during the past four years, we identified 11 HIV infected patients who were diagnosed with AIH. So this is 11 cases during the past four years. So this number might be underreported. Due to the very low number of cases, the effect of HIV and ART on the natural history and treatment response of AIH in HIV patients is currently unknown. The diagnosis of AIH in HIV is quite challenging because there are many potential causes of liver injury in HIV patients. When we see HIV patients come up with uh, abnormal liver function tests or hepatitis, we, surely, we usually think of other reasons of hepatitis, for example, like viral infection, opportunities infection, or drug toxicity, or other causes, rather than think of the AIH. And the other reason that making the diagnosis of AIH in HIV are difficult is that HIV itself can cause elevation of gamma goblin, and also it can cause false positive of autoantibody. There's one uh, cohort study of um, almost 100 HIV patients, and they looked at the proportion of HIV patients who have a positive of autoantibodies. And they found that up to one third of patients had NA positive at high titer. Also, they found that 20% uh, of patients have high level of IgG, particularly those with autoantibody positive, they have much higher high uh, IgG level than those without autoantibodies. With all this reason, AIH can be underdiagnosed because of the complexity of the diagnosis. Pathogenesis of AIH in HIV infected patients is currently unknown. It could be either de novo or immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome or iris, the unmasking iris, as Dr. Sassisopin mentioned earlier. The presentation of AIH in HIV infected patients, uh, I'm going to present to you uh, the report from 20 cases during the past 10 years. Most of the patients were female, only 20% were male. And I would like to point out that 20% is actually higher than the general population. In non-HIV patients, only 10% of uh, AIH patients were male. The age at diagnosis of AIH in HIV infected patients varies ranging from 20s to 60s. CD4 count at the time of AIH diagnosis usually are quite good. Uh, most of them have CD4 count of greater than 250 or 300. And ALT elevation or hepatitis, it could be mild hepatitis, moderate hepatitis, or even severe hepatitis. Regarding the elevation of the IgG, 
most of the patient has an elevation of IgG. Uh, the proportion is 96%, which is much higher than non-HIV patient. And it was present in about 78% uh, of the patient with HIV. And this number is comparable to non-HIV patient. For smooth muscle antibody, the presence of a smooth muscle antibody was present in about 60% of patients. This is lower than the non-HIV AIH patient. Next, I, I'm going to present you the presentation of AIH in 11 uh, HIV-infected Thai population. We found that in our cohort, the percent of male was 36%, which is higher than the previous re report. This is very interesting. For the age group at presentation of an AIH, the median age was about 40, and it could range from 20, 30, 40, or 60. The duration of HIV infection before the AIH diagnosis, the median time was about six years, but it could be just only one year, two year, or longer, as long as 10 years or 25 years. This is a, a antiretroviral regimen that the patient uh, received when they were diagnosed with AIH. Uh, both uh, half of them received tenofovir, emtricitabine, or efavirenz, and half of them received tenofovir, lamivudine, and efavirenz. ALT elevation, most of them have about 200 to uh, 300 uh, uh, elevation of ALT. And globulin level, all of them have elevated globulin. So again, if you see the HIV patients with elevation of uh, ALT and elevation of globulin, please think about the AIH for differential diagnosis as well. 90% of patients have elevation of ANA, and this is much higher than the report of the HIV cohort. One interesting thing that is different from the previous report is that in the Thai cohort, the positive uh, SMA or smooth muscle antibody is quite low, lower, just only 45% as compared to 62% in the previous report. And when we categorize by Gender, we found that to only 25% of males were positive for smooth muscle antibody, and uh, female was positive much higher. 57% uh, of females were positive for smooth muscle antibody. For IgG elevation, 80% of them has positive for IgG elevation. So if you th uh, think of uh, uh, you raise a question whether the HIV have hepatitis because of AIH. You could do the screening test of ANA, smooth muscle antibody, and IgG. This is a CD4 count at the time of AIH diagnosis. You can see that most of them have very good CD4 count. Just only two patients have CD4 less than 100. And uh, similarly, the viral roles, most of them uh, were have the undetectable viral at the time of AIH diagnosis. Treatment of AIH in HIV infection, there's currently no guidelines uh, for uh, AIH treatment in this particular group of the patients. But, so we recommend that we can use the same regimens as non-HIV patients, which is an immunosuppressive the prednisolone in combination with azathioprine. Back to the case. When uh, the AIH was diagnosed, we started with prednisolone 20 mg per day. Uh, one month after the treatment, the ALT went down from 200 to 100. And also, you can see that the goblin went down from 8.1 to 7.7. And within three months, uh, ALT was normalized, and we can reduce the dose of prednisolone and azathioprine. And goblin can, uh, went down from 8.1 to 4.5. In summary, for the autoimmune hepatitis in HIV infection, 
H A I H in patient is HIV is rare, but increasing recognized entity. But I would say from my experiences that it's not a rare disease. I, I would say that it is not uncommon. And that, that the diagnosis and treatment requires careful decision making because when you start the treatment with immunosuppressive, the uh, patient may get, uh, may get some opportunistic infection, particularly those with uh, cirrhosis or with diabetes. And AIH should be the di differential diagnosis when evaluating HIV patients with elevating liver enzymes. Moving on to the second case, male patients, 24 years old. He was diagnosed with HIV infection for two years and uh, received the uh, ARV. His, H, uh, his viral for HIV was undetectable. He has very good CD4 count. He was sent to see me because of persistent hepat uh, transaminitis. This is the first visit at the liver clinic. He has elevation of ALT at uh, almost 300, uh, almost 10 times above the normal limit. And he also have the BMI of 26, which is higher than 25. So we called him as uh, he has uh, obesity. And he said, uh, he told me that uh, during the past year, he gained 15 kilos just over one year, which is very fast. He can bed very fast, 15 kilo within a year. So we think that the elevation of ALT might come from the fatty liver. We work out for the fatty liver disease. We did a fibro scan and measure the fat content in the liver. This is a CAP score, uh, which was 328. The normal level of CAP score in fibro scan is 200. So this is very high and comparable with the status is get three. He, he has my abnormal of uh, fat, fasting blood sugar, cholesterol, and triglyceride. The viral hepatitis B and C was negative. So at that time, he was diagnosed with non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. So we asked him to do the lifestyle modification, do the weight reduction. At that time, he took some food supplement, which might cause an elevation of ALT. So we asked him to stop uh, some, the food supplement. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in HIV is very common. The prevalence of fatty liver disease in HIV is higher than general population, which is 35% compared to 25%. And the reason of higher uh, prevalence than general population, because there are two factors. HIV infected patients might have the metabolic factor that are risk factor for uh, fatty liver disease, including diabetes, obesity, or dyslipidemia. However, they might have some uh, specific HIV-related factor that contribute to development of fatty liver because we found that HIV-infected patients with fatty liver disease have a lower BMI than HIV-negative controls. And one of the reasons that um, uh, HIV-infected patients got fatty liver be because of the HIV itself can induce immune. Uh, when the immune get reactivated, it can cause insulin resistance that uh, result in lipid accumulation within the liver. The patient came back again one month later. Instead of getting loose that his weight, he gained five kilos. So he can, from uh, 72 kilos, the weight came up to 77 kilo, and the BMI went up from 26 to 28, and the elevation of ALT get worse from 300 to almost 500. We asked him again, please reduce your weight, not uh, gaining your weight. And he came back later, two months later, uh, he said that, well, doctor, uh, in July, I got sick, I got high fever, and I was admitted, and the doctor uh, diagnosed me as I have flu. I got many, many drugs during hospitalization. I just came back, uh, I just discharged from the hospital, and I didn't feel well, so I took some over-the-counter drugs because I got fatigued, I got dizzy. 
uh, at that time, we thought that uh, the elevation of ALT might come from uh, the drug that uh, he took by himself. Uh, do you think there is any other possible cause of worsening hepatitis in this patient? Is it a drug-induced hepatitis or it is the a NASH that he gets worse because he gains some weight or it is because of autoimmune hepatitis that we just discussed earlier or other causes like acute hepatitis E infection? Please vote. Wow, very interesting. Yes, most of you uh, think that this is a drug-induced hepatitis. And some of you uh, thought that this is NASH. Uh, for hepatitis in NASH, the level of the elevation of ALT usually less than five times. And none of them have uh, elevation of ALT greater than 10 times. In this patient, the uh, level of ALT is more than 10 times. They may have NASH, but this is the only single cause that causes elevation of ALT at this point. But this could be the drug-induced hepatitis. However, we, wasn't, we weren't quite sure whether this uh, caused by the drug. So we worked up, uh, uh, we, do some, we did some more blood tests to test for the viral hepatitis E, and they were all negative. We also test for the autoimmune hepatitis because the AIH can be induced by some drugs. Uh, and NA was positive at low titer. And this is a result of hepatitis B and C uh, uh, earlier in May 2016. And uh, we asked him again whether he, he have any like behavioral risk that he can get HIV, uh, oh, sorry, hepatitis B and hepatitis C. He said that, well, I didn't have any sex with anybody. Uh, I didn't uh, use any uh, drug uh, IV injection. But anyway, we test the blood test for hepatitis B and C again, and we found that anti hcv was positive and the viral was detectable. So the lesson learned from this case is that sometimes when uh, at, at the beginning when we saw the hepatitis and the anti hcv was negative, it could be acute hepatitis C infection, especially in the patients with HIV. So if you think of uh, he acute hepatitis C infection, if the anti hcv was negative, you probably have to check for the HCV virus to confirm that the patients did not have a hepatitis C infection. At that time, we decided that uh, we're gonna see and observe whether the uh, viral load of hepatitis C uh, remain, whether the patients turn into chronic hepatitis C infection or not. It turns out that uh, two months later, the viral road for hepatitis C, undetectable. And the liver function test, the ALT, went down from 900 to about 200. And the ALT remained at 200 for six months later. We repeat the HCV viral road again. It remained negative, and HIV viral road remained negative also, not detectable. We repeat the fibro scan. The steatosis score is about grade two. At this time, the patients were on uh, tenofovir, emtricitabine, and efavirenz for three years. We were up for uh, autoantibodies, it remained negative, uh, hepatitis B negative. We did a liver biopsy, we showed the nonspecific information. So at this point, we discussed with the primary doctor whether this could cause by efavirenz, because we know that uh, this drug can cause severe hepatitis up to 8% of HIV patient. If you were the, uh, the primary physician who take care of this patient, would you change the ARV regimen? Interesting. 
Uh, some of you said that you change the regimen, and some of you said that you won't change the regimen. Just ignore the hepatitis. <laughs> At that time, we decided to change uh, to switch uh, efferents to lipirubin, and the ALT went down from 200 to 100, and went down again to 445. So. The diagnosis of hepatitis at this point is drug-induced liver injury. The question is, in the patient with uh, underlying fatty liver disease, would they have the higher chance of getting drug-induced hepatitis than patients without fatty liver disease? The answer is yes, because fatty liver disease is a risk factor for drug-induced liver injury. In HIV patient, uh, the drug, the ARV, particular in NRTI group, can cause severe hepatitis, up to 8% with efferents and up to 4% with levipirine. And in the patients with fatty liver disease, can increase the risk or severity of drug-induced hepatitis, as shown in this case. In summary, fatty liver disease in HIV is very common. Up to 35% of patients have fatty liver disease, which is caused by metabolic factor or HIV-related factor. The fatty liver disease in HIV increases the risk of drugs into river injury. The mainstay of the treatment of fatty liver disease uh, is lifestyle modification. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Runkerji, for the very nice summary of the autoimmune hepatitis and NASH. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Yes, please. I don't have a question, but I like you pointing out the acute hepatitis C. We run an acute HIV cohort in, in Bangkok, and we have about 600 patients now. And from 2009 to 2014, we saw no hepatitis C. And we're hoping to present at Croyer IAS this year. We had an incidence of 3% last year. Mm -hmm. And we've accumulated up to 40 cases now in just, just five years. And nearly all presented exactly like you said. Um, the ones that uh, were prevalent at baseline, they had negative serology at baseline. And four weeks later, they were positive. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Are there any questions? I do have one question for Dr. Ron Goody. Is that I saw you showing the NASH uh, diagnosis by the fiber scan, which is using the CAP and the transient elastography. Are you aware of any other non invasive uh, intervention or diagnosis to, to evaluate the NASH in the population, in even HIV or non HIV population? Well, thank, thank you. you. So there are many non-invasive tests uh, for measure the fat content in the liver. Uh, uh, fibro scan is one method, and the reason that fibro scan is is very popular is because it is very easy. It's non-invasive. Uh, you can do it very fast within two to five minutes. Uh, the patient has to fast only just three hours before you do the fibro scan, and the result of the fibro scan is very consistent with the liver biopsy. So now FibroScan is considered to be uh, the tool that can use as a, not really the gold standard, uh, but it, it is an acceptable tool to evaluate liver fibrosis and fatty liver. For other tests that you can do is the ultrasound, like 2D shear valve, uh, which you have to ha have the special software to integrate into your ultrasound machine, and you can calculate the fat. And the other thing is the uh, uh, MRE, MRE elastography, the new version of the MRE. You can measure the fibrosis and fat in right. the liver. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.